स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so last time we started talking about free groups. Uh, let's keep going. So what we have done so far is the very first step, which is to construct the set of all words in the alphabet. So we are trying to find the free group in two generators A and B. So we said let's look at words of S. which is just the set of all words formed using these two alphabets and these look like this there's the empty word there's words of length 1 words of length 2 and so on so it's an infinite set and the important property was that this set had an associative operation which we called concatenation of words or putting two words together so this operation was associative and the other important fact is that it had an identity element which is nothing but the empty word but we realize that this does not this uh, set words of s with respect to this operation star does not have inverses okay so it's not a group and that's the the thing that we'll try and remedy in today's lecture okay so how do we make this a group the first requirement for a group is inverses and we notice that no element of of the set has inverses except for the identity itself which is its own inverse none of the others have inverses in particular a and b these two basic words of length 1 they don't have inverses so uh, let's try and and construct inverses or somehow introduce inverses and to do this there is sort of one key idea that we use okay which is the following instead of looking at words in this alphabet s we look at words in an augmented alphabet okay so what does that mean i'm going to enlarge the set s to make it somewhat bigger there's a b and i'll put in two more elements which i'll call a prime and b prime these will eventually perform the role of the inverses okay but for now think of them as sort of two more uh, alphabets and we look at the set of all words in this four element alphabet so that's well that's still a very large set it's now got all words in using a b a dash and b dash it's got the empty word it's still got an associative multiplication and that associative multiplication still doesn't have inverses okay so we have sort of just replaced the original uh, set words of s by a much larger set in some sense okay but uh here comes the key step so we consider this so that step 1 step 2 is really the key to everything that um, we are about to do and this is a construction which will keep coming up in many places which is the following we impose the following relations okay so we impose the following relations what does that mean well first let me tell you what the relations are so i want uh, look at the word a a prime <coughs> this is a word of length 2 uh, in uh, words of s hat this i want to say that this word should be the same okay so i'll just put the tilde there to say the same as or equivalent to the empty word okay so i want to similarly make a prime a equivalent to the empty word Okay, so I want to somehow impose these four relations. Okay, so notice that uh, at the moment a, you know, the things that I have written on the left hand side are all words of length two, and of course on the right hand side we have the empty word of length zero, and of course these are not equal definitely right now. But what we want to do is to somehow say that we want to think of them as being equivalent. Okay, and uh, not just this, we impose these relations, and further. uh what else do we want to do we also want to say that uh 
we can also replace okay so here's sort of i mean think of these two steps right now as just being some sort of a heuristic idea of what it means for a prime and b prime to perform the roles of the inverses of a and b so at the moment don't think of them you know don't be too worried about the lack of rigor we'll make it a little more precise soon so heuristically here's sort of what we want to do we impose these relations and what else do we also want we also want to do the following whenever we we have a word say we have some long word in this alphabet a b a dash b dash and somewhere in the middle of this word if i find any one of these four um, words of length 2 so for example something 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 a a dash followed by a bunch of other letters i want to be able to take this word and sort of remove the a a dash from the middle okay so i want to think of it as the same word in which the a a dash block is removed from the middle and then so i just take the words to the left of this block and concatenate it with the, the words to the right of this block for example so let's just do this by example so I will go to the next page so here is an example so if i have for example a b b dash a dash a b now look at this word uh, when i scan it i notice that uh, you know that is sort of this b b dash which occurs one after the other there's also another a dash a which occurs one after the other okay so in fact there are two reductions here that i would like to be able to do so if a prime is to be the inverse of a then we would want this word to be the same as or to be equivalent to the following word so let me make the second a prime a into just the the identity so it just becomes this and now i can look at this pair or in fact if i choose i can also look at the the other pair let's do the one in the middle if i replace that with the the empty word then i want this to just collapse to the word a b okay so this is one sort of reduction that i would want which is what it means to say that a prime and uh, a are inverses of each other b prime and b are inverses of each other so i mean to take a maybe um, slightly different example i can take a b b prime a prime for example and here again i can i would want to think of this word as being equivalent to the word a a prime and similarly the word a a prime is equivalent to the the empty word okay so what exactly are we we getting at at this point so this is really captured precisely by the notion of an equivalence relation okay so if you sort of think a little bit about what we are doing here's what it is so what we uh, want to do really is to define an equivalence relation Okay, so which I'll denote by tilde on the set of all words in the alphabet I set. Okay, so here's really what we are trying to do. Now the question is how to rigorously define such an equivalence relation. So uh, we have already seen some of the the uh, uh, the requirements. We have those four important. Uh, identifications we would want these five words a a prime a prime a b b prime b prime b and the empty word to be equivalent to each other okay so that is the the primary requirement and then the second property here is that whenever any of these occurs as a sub word of a longer word then inside that longer word you can replace the sub word by any one of these other four sub words okay so that's sort of uh, what we want to do so let's try and define this equivalence relation in a in a formal manner okay so we say uh, define so here's the definition given two words w1 and w2 
we say or we define w1 is equivalent to w2 if I can obtain w2 if w2 can be obtained from w1 by a sequence of what I will call the basic rewriting rules. Okay, so um, let us see what is what is meant by this. So, we have already seen an example of this uh, just above. So, what is a basic rewriting rule? Okay, and those are just the ones that we have talked about. So, the basic rewriting rules are the following. So, let me say let us Okay, so, there are 8 basic rewriting rules. So, what are the rewriting rules? It says suppose I have a word. So, if there is a word in which a a prime occurs okay, and there is something to the to the right. So, this is uh, maybe it is easier to, to call these two guys something. So, let us call this whatever occurs to the left of a a prime as the left sub word L. So, that is again a word in the alphabet and what occurs to the right. So, let us just delete the dots and call uh, this as L. So, some word and what occurs to the right of a prime is r. So, given a word of this form some word L followed by a a prime followed by some word r I am allowed to rewrite. So, this can be replaced with the word L r. Okay. In other words I am I am just going to delete the a a prime from the middle. Similarly, if I have a word um, L followed by a prime a followed by r again I am allowed to replace that word which is the word L r. Okay. So, let us write the other two. So, when you get so we say that the word L r is obtained from the original word L a a prime r by using one of the basic rewriting rules. Okay. So, these these are called the basic rewriting rules and these are four of them. Now, uh, there are four more which are just the same rules in reverse. Okay. So, not only are you allowed to delete an a a prime or an a prime a from a sub from a word you are you are also allowed to introduce that if you want. Okay. So, here are four rules and the other four are just the reverses of the so, given two words L and R, I am allowed to introduce an A A prime in the middle or I am allowed to introduce ok. So, I am allowed to replace L R with um, replaced with this with a with a word whose length is 2 more. Okay. So, these are the 8 basic rewriting rules that I have. So, what are the rewriting rules? They are a way of obtaining a new word from a given word. Okay. The first 4 rules give you a new word whose length is 2 less and the next 4 rules give you a new word whose length is 2 more. Okay. Now, using any of these uh, 8 basic rewriting rules in sequence you are allowed to use them again and again one after the other in um, any order you want. Okay. Now, keep doing this and starting from a word w if uh, uh, w 1 if you can somehow obtain w 2. Okay. So, going back to our definition we said w 1 is equivalent to w 2. What does that mean? It means I start with w 1 Okay, I I see if one of these eight rules can be obtained. I mean, can can be applied, 
uh, I mean you can always apply one of the rules because for example the rules which allow you to add two letters in the middle that can be applied to any word if you wish. So I take W1 I, I apply one of my basic rewriting rules and it gives me some word okay so I don't know I should call it uh, something maybe I get a word Z um, what shall we call it Z1 and I take this word Z1 I apply one other basic rewriting rule maybe it gives me a word Z2 and on Z2 I apply one of the rules I get Z3 etc etc and I keep doing this say at some point I get ZK and to ZK I, I finally apply a rule and it transforms into W2 okay. So if you can do this if you can find a sequence Z1, Z2, ZK such that this chain from W1 to W2 proceeds through uh, successive basic rewriting rules then you declare that W1 is equivalent to W2 okay. So I hope the definition is clear it is slightly involved it is uh, not the maybe not uh, a kind of uh, equivalence relation definition which you have seen before but uh, nevertheless so the first order of business let us check that this is actually an equivalence relation on the set okay. So let us check uh, is this an equivalence relation check that. Okay, so uh, re remember equivalence relation means <coughs> I need to check three things. I need to check that the relation is reflexive which means given a word w I need to check that it is equivalent to itself and that is sort of trivial because I just do not apply any of the basic rewriting rules right. I am allowed to apply you know any number of them but I am also allowed to al uh, apply just zero number of basic rewriting rules in other words I do not apply any rule. Or if you really wish to you know to actually apply a rule you can apply for example the uh, say the fifth rule and then follow it up by acting the, the first rule okay. So you add in the a a prime and then you delete the a a prime if you wish. So it is in fact a reflexive operation um, let us show the other two properties symmetry says that so this is a second requirement of an equivalence relation is that it should be symmetric. So if W1 is equivalent to uh, W2 then I need to show that this means W2 is equivalent to W1 okay. But again observe this is why we had 8 basic rewriting rules and not just four, the first 4 the, the rules 5 through 8 are just sort of the rules 1 through 4 in reverse right. So if, if I have say some word w gives me a word x by using one of the basic rewriting rules. So let me say if for example I apply rule 1 to go from w to x then it is clear that I can get uh, w from x by just applying rule 5 right. If I can get this by deleting a pair a prime then I can get the other guy by just putting that pair back right. Similarly if I get a word x from w by applying say rule uh, what was that 2 then I can go back I can undo it by using rule 6 etc. Okay, so it is clear that if I construct a chain going from w1 to w2 then by applying the rules in reverse I can just get a chain going from um, x back to w. Okay. And third property transitivity is again as easy to check. Okay, so if I have a chain which connects W1 to W2 chain of rewriting rules and I have a chain of rewriting rules connecting W2 to W3 all I have to do is just you know apply this first set of rules follow it, follow it up by the next set of rules and using that rewriting I can start with W1 find the chain which takes me all the way to W3 okay. So in fact this somewhat strange definition defines an equivalence relation on the set uh, words of s hat okay so that's the the first thing that we have checked okay so now um, let's maybe just do an example um, of 
of uh, applying the sequence of rewriting rules and so on. So, for instance, let me start with a word that has say a b prime b. Okay, so, here is a word okay, with uh, a's, b's, a primes and b primes in it and let me see what I can do by, by way of uh, applying my rewriting rules. <coughs> so, I, I already see that there is a b prime b right there. So, there are many other pairs which can be collapsed. For example, there is a b b prime here, there is an a prime a there, there is an a prime a here, there is an a prime here and so on. So, I can of course, apply my rewriting rules um, one at a time. So, when I apply my rule, this guy becomes for example, let me collapse the first pair. So, this then becomes a a a prime a prime a b b b prime a prime a or if instead of the first pair, I choose to collapse the last pair a prime a. So, then that is like a b prime b a a prime a prime a b b b prime ok. Now, uh, so as you can see you can keep going. So, I apply let us see what shall we apply next. Um, suppose I collapse this a a prime then it becomes a a prime a b b b prime a prime a Then again here I have other choices I could have collapsed. Um, let us see maybe the, the next pair a prime a. So, that will give me a a a prime b b and so on. So, this again maybe I collapse the last b b prime. A and there is a b at the end ok and so on. So, you can see that you, you will sort of form uh, uh, a structure like this and uh, of course, it is it's, it's an infinite um, set the, the words you can get from a fixed word by using the rewriting rules because I am always allowed to add um, you know I can always insert uh, an a prime or a prime a wherever I want. For example, I could take this this original word whatever it is and maybe just take uh, a prime a at the end. I just add one extra a prime a ok and so on. So, you can imagine that it is like this. So, some of these will will eventually become the same meaning this is uh, and so on ok. And uh, in this case as you can probably see from what we, we underlined already if you did the all possible collapsings to the maximum extent I have b prime b is gone, a a prime is gone, a prime a is gone, uh, b b prime is gone, this is gone. So, finally, after all this you will see that you will sort of get the word a b ok. So, that is going to be uh, a word which will which will eventually arise when you keep doing this and uh, in some sense that is the smallest words the, the, the smallest um, the maybe you should call it the, the, the word of smallest length or sometimes it is called the reduced word and so on. But uh, here is a nice uh, exercise um, you know for you to play with just try to see what more um, you know try to write down a bunch of other words that you can construct which can all be obtained one from the other by a sequence of rewriting rules ok. Now, uh, our definition of the equivalence relation what it says is that for example, all the words that you see now on the page are all in fact equivalent to one another ok. Why is that? Because no matter where I am, so for example, if, if I have this word here, this word here is actually equivalent to this word here ok. These two words are equivalent why? Because what is the um, definition say I should be able to go from one to the other by applying one of my basic rewriting rules. So, here is what I do I first go up like this ok. So, going from here to here involves insertion of uh, a pair a prime and then from there I, I reach this word which again was obtained by insertion and then I go down like this where this word is obtained from the word on top by deletion of some pair and then I, I reach this point ok. 
So no matter where I am, I can always start there and reach any other point in this uh, collection of words either by using insertions or deletions of pairs a prime okay so this entire collection is in fact uh, equivalent everything here is equivalent to everything else and this uh, what we mean by an equivalence class is more or less this this idea here so recall that uh, when i have an equivalence relation so an equivalence relation always uh, divides or partitions is the right word any equivalence relation partitions the set the underlying set partitions the set into a collection of disjoint into a collection of disjoint what are called equivalence classes so this is disjoint equivalence classes Okay, so it partitions the set. In this case, the set itself is nothing but the set of all words. Okay, where what is an equivalence class? So here's, uh, if you recall the definition. So suppose I pick a word W, I will denote by this square bracket W the equivalence class. So let's use this to denote the equivalence class to which W belongs. So this is the equivalence class of W which by definition is just nothing but the set of all words x in the collection words of s hat such that w is equivalent to x okay so collect every other word which is equivalent i mean collect every word which is equivalent to w that collection is is called the equivalence class of w and of course what this is is a subset this is a subset of the set of all words in s hat okay and now here is the important definition for s so let's call this set g is just a set of all equivalence classes so g is the set of equivalence classes okay for this equivalence relation tilde that we have just defined so just take the collection of all equivalence classes in other words uh, the elements of G are themselves subsets of, of words of S hat. Okay, now look at the collection of equivalence classes and observe that. So, one way of writing it is to say it is the set of all W as W varies over the set of all words in S hat. But note that you know if I take an equivalence class of W, so W sometimes you know uh, when we denote an equivalence class in this manner what we are really doing is picking one representative w from that equivalence class but note that the following is true if i picked another element x from the same equivalence class so i pick an element x from the equivalence class of w then the equivalence class so for all x in the equivalence class of w the equivalence class of x is just the same as the equivalence class of w okay in other words the same equivalence class in this case this you know either of these two sides uh, they represent the same equivalence class but the elements that you pick to represent it which in this case are w and x can very well be different okay so that's something to always keep in mind when one is dealing with equivalence classes okay now here's the uh, very interesting observation that the way we have defined the, the equivalence relation, this collection G also has a well defined, so G has a well defined uh, binary operation, basically a multiplication operation given by, so here is the definition remember elements of g are themselves equivalence classes so i take the equivalence classes of class of w1 and here's this dot denotes the binary operation the multiplication i'm going to define on g so w1 times w2 the equivalence class is defined to be well it should again be an another equivalence class and we just define it to be the equivalence class of the composition of w1 and w2 okay 
So observe the, the definition itself at the moment makes sense. I take two equivalence classes w1 and w I take two representatives w1 and w2 from those classes. I come I concatenate those two representatives. I get a new word w1 star w2 and I take the equivalence class of that new word. Okay, That is my definition. Now the key uh, thing that one needs to prove is really well definedness. Okay, the key point here is that uh, this definition is well defined and why does one need to worry about that because uh, we are picking representatives from these classes w1 and w2 if so, so it is not a priori clear that suppose I changed my representative. So here is what we will need to show what if I pick different representatives. So if x1 is another representative it belongs to this equivalence class okay and I pick a different representative x2 from the equivalence class w2 okay then so what does that mean ie I have instead of taking w1 as my representative I am thinking of x1 as my representative of that class and similarly okay so I am I am changing my representative then so suppose I do this then I need to show that my right hand side will be the same answer whether I do w1 star w2 and take the concatenation or I take x1 star x2 and concatenate and take their concatenation the answers should be the same so okay then um, we need okay we must show that x1 star x2 the equivalence class is the same answer as what you would get if you took w1 star w2 okay so this is what showing well definedness means okay so let's prove this again it it comes about from the special way in which the equivalence class or the equivalence relation was defined so observe what are we given we are given that x1 and w1 are equivalent to each other so let us prove this given what is given is the following these two are equivalent and what we need to prove is that the concatenations are equivalent x1 star x2 is equivalent to w1 star w2 ok. So, what does equivalent mean? It means there is a chain starting with w1 ending at x1 in which each intermediate step is obtained from the preceding one by an application of a basic rewriting rule. Okay. So, let us uh, write that down. So, step 1 I start at w1 okay, and I use my basic rewriting rule I get some word. I use again one of the other rules it becomes some other word etc etc till I finally I am able to reach x1 okay this is what it means to say w1 and x1 are equivalent to each other okay similarly I have w2 and x2 so I can start at w2 I can follow my rules successively till I reach well Okay, so that is what the definition says. Now given this we need to show that if it start with w1 star w2 I can reach x1 star x2 by means of my basic rewriting rules. Okay, now the way we do this is just via this simple observation that look at this, this initial uh, chain starting from w1 and going to x1. What does a basic rewriting rule do? the basic rewriting rule has the following form. So for instance if this is my word w1 I look through the letters in w1 I either find a successive pair of the form a a prime etc which I delete or I take my word w1 I look through the letters I pick some position and there I insert a pair a a prime ok. So the transformation that I perform has this very specific form you either collapse or you sort of expand at a certain location in, in the word. So if if I go from let us look at the very first step of the chain I go from w1 to 
whatever is the next word in the sequence by means of some basic rewriting rule, then here is what it means. It means that look at W1 and the next guy. Now, to W1 on the right hand side, I can con uh, let me try doing this. Let me concatenate W1 on the right hand side with the word W2. Okay? And the next step in the chain, I will do the same thing to it. I concatenate W2 to that word. Now, if this second guy can be obtained from the first one by some basic rewriting rule, then it follows that W1 star W2 will lead to that word star W2. Okay, I can take the second guy and I, I do W2 to it. So, maybe I should give this, give this a name. So, this intermediate step, suppose I call it Z1, that is my word. Then, here is what I mean that if from W1 to Z1 I can go by means of a basic rewriting rule, I can also go from W1 star W2 to Z1 star W2 by, by the same rule really okay? because I only need to apply that rule to the W1 portion of my word. Now and so on. So, the next step again because I can go from Z1 to the next fellow Z2 by means of some rule. It means I can also go from Z1 star W2 to Z2 star W2 by using the same rule but only applying it to the Z1 portion and so on. Okay. So, keep doing this till you reach the end. So, the end here is X1 but of course, remember I have starred every one of them with the W2. Okay. So, I, I, I have started at W1 star W2 which is what I need to start with. Okay, so, we have managed to go from W1 star W2 which is what we wanted, but we have only reached X1 star W2, okay? but uh, that is already a very good start because now we do the same thing with the, with the other sequence. We know that we can start at W2 and reach X1. So, now let us do the same thing here, this implies. Now, I will sort of concatenate on the left of W2. So, starting at at W2, I can reach the next step, uh, whatever this, this word is. So, let us call this Z1 dash. Now, what I do is to concatenate X1 on the left of W2 and because I can go from W2 to Z1 dash, it also implies that I can go from X1 star W2 to X1 star uh, Z1 dash in the same manner. And you know by the same logic as before, so I keep applying it to the next um, to the next step of the chain and so on. So I keep doing this till I reach the very last step, and the last step is x2, but concatenated on the left by x1. Okay. So what this means is if I start at x1 star w2 by applying left uh, concatenation to the second chain, I can reach x1 star x2. Okay. So, now I just put these put these together. So, what have I managed to do? I have managed to start at W1 star W2. I am following this chain of rewriting rules. So, at this point this and this are the same. Now, I follow after that this chain of rules and finally, I reach my destination. Okay. So, what this means is that W1 star W2 is in fact equivalent to X1 star X2 okay, as required. So, what this means is that my uh, on my group G or at the moment my set G, the um, uh, binary operation that I have defined is at least it, it makes sense, it is well defined. Okay? But uh, we called it G for a reason, we are going to make this into a group, we are going to show that it actually becomes a group under this operation and that is really our, our in some sense our main theorem that is going to be the free group. So, G is a group under the binary operation that we just defined. Okay. Proof, well what all do we need to show? We need to show that the binary operation is associative. Okay. Why is it associative? So, we will show that first. Uh, observe the definition said if I take W1 multiplied by W2. Okay, let us just write out the definition of associativity here. This by definition is uh, W1 star W2, the equivalence class of the concatenation 
multiplied by the equivalence class of W3. Okay, which by definition again is the equivalence class of W1 star W2 star W3. Okay. But observe that the what is inside the representative of the class that I get here is just the concatenation of these three guys W1, W2 and W3 and the concatenation operation is of course associative. So, I can replace this triple with uh, say W1 star W2, W3 and that by the definition of the multiplication in G will just become this product. Okay, and that is exactly the, the verification of associativity. Okay, now, the identity is also easy. So, there is an identity element. Uh, what should the identity element be? Well, so let us call it uh, uh, E maybe the identity element of this group G. Well, I claim it is nothing but you take the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay, so, that is the, the empty word in words of S hat. The equivalence class of the empty word by the way is uh, it has lots and lots of words remember right. So, we um, looked at a, a for example, a a prime a, a prime a those basic rewriting guys they are all in fact in the equivalence class of the empty word. So, this is in fact the set of all words which if you keep applying rewriting rules will finally come down to the empty word. The claim is that that serves as an identity again by definition because the multiplication just says for any word E if I multiply it with the equivalence class of the empty word I just have to concatenate W with the empty word, but that is just W okay. and observe the same logic holds with in the other order if I hit the equivalence class of the empty word with W on the right then of course, it gives me W. Okay. So, in some sense these two properties just follow from the corresponding properties of the star operation. So, no surprises so far, but the reason we were doing all this is because the star does not admit inverses. Okay? But the important property here is that this does have inverses. Okay? In other words, it is a group. So, let us verify this. Let us check that given any element of G, I can construct an inverse of that element with respect to this, this new operation that I have defined. So, for a start, let us let us just look at the, the two basic generators A and B, the alphabets. Um, if I just take the single, uh, if I take the equivalence class of the, the word A, the question is what is the inverse of this guy? So, in other words, what equivalence class will you take such that, uh, you know, what should I put here? So, that this product gives me the identity element and remember the identity element just means it is the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay? And observe that, well, by definition, uh, we already know something. So, let us just throw that in. Let us let us perform a simple computation here. So, observe if I take A and I multiply it with the equivalence class of the element A prime, then by definition this is the equivalence class of the concatenation, the word A with A prime, which again by definition is just A A prime, the word of length 2. But remember A A prime by the rewriting rule is the same as the empty word. Okay? So, in other words it says that uh, A equivalence class multiplied by the equivalence class of A prime is in fact the identity element of this group okay? and of course, in the other order as well A prime multiplied by A would also give you identity you know you can also check that the same is true of B and B prime. So, this is what I meant when I said in the beginning that you know A prime and B prime will eventually perform the roles of the, the inverses. Okay, that is only we have only constructed inverses for these special one letter words if you wish. Uh, what about a general word that is that is also very easy. So, let us just do it by example and you you will see the general picture very quickly. Suppose I take the word W equals uh, A B B A for example. 
okay so the question is what should the inverse so maybe i should make it slightly asymmetric so let me put two a's on the end so a b b a a for example okay so take this word w i want to know what is the inverse of this this word okay so i claim here's a simple prescription you just look at this this string of letters you read them in reverse okay and when you read them in reverse you you just change all the a a's to a primes and b's to b primes so here's the prescription uh, the inverse of w so let me call it w bar for now this is just read w in reverse and replace uh, any any symbol that you see by its dash okay so maybe i should call it replace each letter by its dash okay so in other words here i i apply this prescription i read this in reverse and i see two a's from the end so i ma make them dashes i make b's into dashes so here's my claim is that this this new word will serve as the inverse so let us check so how should we check by definition this product is just w concatenated with this new word a prime a prime b prime b prime a prime which as we know is a b b a a a prime a prime b prime b prime a prime so here's some some long word but i claim that if i keep applying my rewriting rules successively i can convert this word into the the empty word okay so let's just do this sort of uh, right there so let me write down this this word and i'll convert it into the the empty word so a b b a a a dash a dash b dash b dash a dash okay so let's just do it right uh, right there so i have this pair a and a prime right over here so i know that that pair can be erased i can make it into the identity into the empty word so i erase that from my word okay now i look at what's left now again in what's left i see that an a and an a dash are paired up so i can erase them Okay, now I look at what's left. I see that this b and this b dash are paired up, so I erase them. Again, okay, what's left? The b and this b dash are paired up. This a and this a dash are paired up. Okay, so you see that's exactly how we we constructed the inverse. We just read the word in reverse, and for every symbol we just took its its dash. Okay, and the reason for doing this is because exactly this sort of pairwise cancellation is going to happen. and in fact this this was just a particular example uh, but more generally the word can have um, dashes as well okay so here's the maybe um, here's another example so if i have a b a dash a for example then i claim that the inverse of that equivalence class is just read the same thing in reverse but put dashes if you see a put it put an a dash if you see an a dash you convert that to an a so that's it's in some sense uh, a dash dash is like an a so i claim it's this element okay and i leave this for you to check okay and it's easy to write a general prescription as well if you wish that if w is a word which looks like x1 x2 xk each xi is a letter it's either a b a dash or b dash then the inverse of w is just given by the equivalence class of well read it in reverse so y k and i change all the x's to y's where what is y i is just the dash of x i okay so this being a bit loose here but you you know what i mean each xi if it's an a then yi is a dash if it's a dash then it is an a okay so what have we done 
we have therefore proved that this group so finally we have managed to do what we set out to do we have constructed a group g uh, with respect to this this binary operation so g with respect to this binary operation is called so its definition this is called the free group on the two symbols a and b okay so observe it is um, it certainly contains in some sense the elements a and b and uh, next time we'll start looking at some of its other properties okay for now uh, at least the the motivation for this this terminology i mean it's not yet fully clear but we at least said let's start with a and b let's not put any relations uh, just sort of let a and b be arbitrary symbols let them generate look at all possible products and so on and in some sense what we did by this enlargement procedure is to say let's not just take products of a's and b's let's sort of also take their inverses let's also throw in two formal symbols which are like the inverses of a and b and sort of take all possible products all words with a in which a's b's a inverses and b inverses occur okay and in some sense that's really what the what the free group is capturing Okay, so more on this next time.